hoping the future is bright for the growth of the democracy in Nigeria. Three, unfortunately, the judgment by the Kanu State Election Petition Tribunal on the March 18th, 2023 governorship election is capable of ending whatever confidence one has in the judiciary of this great country. The reported judgment nullified the free, credible, and globally acclaimed fair election of our governorship candidate, Engineer Abba Kabi Yusuf. I'm presently awarded the election to the APC candidate, Nasuru Wawuda. Four, the tribunal arrived at unjust judgment by unfriendly subtracting 165663 votes. That's 165,663 votes from the governorship's talent in order to enable it unfriendly award the election results to the candidate of the ruling APC. In, in doing so, the tribunal obviously affirms its belief that the vote tally of the APC candidate was sacrosanct. The Supreme Court, in many cases, has stated its position on this matter in similar judgments. Five, it is going to be a hard nut to crack for the Kanu State Election Petition Tribunal to convince a non-partisan Nigerian that in an election cycle with five different polls, presidential, senatorial, House of Representatives, governorship, and House of Assembly, the NPP won in all except the governorship election. For the sake of emphasis, the NPP presidential candidate, His Excellency, Senator Rabi Musa Pankwasu, PhD, FNS defeated the candidate of all progressive candidate in Kano election. As well, you are a with a very wide margin. In the same vein, NNPP won two senatorial seats as against APC4. And in the House of Us, uh, against the NMP, uh, uh, against APC, which is one seat. NMPP also won 18 seats of House of Representatives against APC4. And in the House of Assembly, NMPP won a clear majority, a clear majority seat against the APC migrant number of seats. And yet, the Kanu State Election Petition Tribunal believes it was overvoting that gave an MPP majority vote in the governorship election. We want APC to know that it is not possible to hide behind one finger. Their threat to take can back by all force, like a mirage, has only materialized momentarily. An MPP will get back its mandate, freely given by the people of Kanu State, within the ambit of the law and the provision of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Six, we wish to state emphatically that although the judgment was a clear and deliberate miscarriage of justice, and therefore a disappointment, our faith in the judiciary remains unshaken. Every discerning person knows that an NPP won in all the elections in Kanu State. The APC knew right from the very beginning that it was hugely unpopular in Kanu State. That led it to declare total war on the people of the state during the last election. You will recall that a sitting member of the House of Representatives led a group of a hired 
hoodrums to our sectorate and burned down the building with our members inside and committed cold blood, blooded mass murder of innocent people in broad daylight. The blood of those murdered during the election is crying for justice and will continue to haunt the perpetrators to that their own ultimate end. This and many other wanton lawlessness visited on the people of the Kano State without some of those in law enforcement raising a voice, much less lifting a finger, are part of the reasons why they would want to spare no effort in attempting to mount this electoral haze in broad daylight by all innocent means and decent means and rob the people of Kanu State of the mandate they have freely given to their governor. But we have but we have bad news for them. They have already fared because like all present day light robbery, the perpetrators are known and the exercise will ultimately prove futile. Seven, the NMPP recall with regret that this tribunal has simply replayed the unholy scripts of 19, 2019 by overturning the will of the people and awarding election results to those who evidently and glaring proving to have lost the election. Eight, the NMPP will appeal this most unfair judgment. We call on our millions of supporters in Kano and in the rest of the country to remain calm, be law abiding, and maintain the peace. This glaringly lopsided judgment cannot stand the test of natural justice and fair play. Nine, at this juncture, it is pertinent to ask why is the guilty running when no one is pursuing them? After attempting to steal the people's mandate, they declared 24 hours coffee on the state. After depriving the people of their sacred mandate they are freely given to their governor, the desperate politicians who want to deprive the people their God-given freedom of expression and freedom of movement as well as indeed their livelihood. As if the resort visited on the people of Kano State yesterday was not enough, they are restricting them to their houses. The poor people have nothing to eat inside their houses and now they cannot go out to look for their daily bread, which does not bear the official mark was from a book or a booklet which was furnished to the presiding officer of the pooling unit in which the vote was cast for use at the election in question. He or she shall notwithstanding shall, shall notwithstanding the absence of the official mark which is that you are stamped count that ballot paper. In that case, it has indicated to you clearly now that from the question you asked, that the, N the NMPP and the INEC acted within the ambit of the law. That is on that. Then we now move to the uh, daily trust. Your question was whether the democracy, as we quoted there, is under threat. Everybody knows that whenever you don't follow the procedure, you are not putting a president for others to follow. If you go and do a kangaroo things outside, what do you expect? If what you garbage out is what you are going to receive inside. Or what you garbage inside, you also bring what... So there is always room to follow the due process. If the due process is not followed, the democracy is under threat. That's what we mean. We are not going to be in a other jungle city than to go back to the judiciary and still seek redress so that the due process will follow. That is the threat. Ordinarily, the democ uh, 
judiciary should not be the one deciding the fate of the democracy if the rules are being followed. So the operators or the system of this democracy must learn to follow the process. That's what we mean by threat. And we still maintain that for this our democracy to move out from being nascent democracy to the real democratic principle, we should follow the due process. Then the, that of uh, the nation, the issue mentioned <coughs> that we only said issue concerning governorship. Yes, a lot of press conferences have been, because it was not yesterday. This particular press conference is just for what happened yesterday. We've been doing that, and uh, we are some of uh, the one we lost, we're already in a, in a court of appeal. And take note, once you're already in court of appeal, there are certain things you don't say, otherwise you become prejudiced. 